Oh, hello there. It's me. <laughs> Welcome! Man, it's been a while, right? It's been a while since, uh, since we did this. Since I did this. And also since you did this. What is this? Well, this is, you know, a live stream where I'm going to talk with you guys, the viewing audience, and hopefully you'll get something out of it. Uh, let's, let me explain a little bit what that means for those of you who are new to this situation. Uh, my name is Phil Maki and I am a animator and filmmaker and all around swell guy. And you, you're here cause, cause, uh, you know, cause I invited you, I guess. And, uh, I'm, I'm very thankful that you're here now. I'm well aware that maybe things are busy and you can't watch right as this is happening that's totally fine because the plan is when i'm all done with this recording tonight i'm going to re-upload to youtube so you know if you're not watching this live right now that's okay um but there is a special treat for those of you who are watching live hello and the treat for you is this is an ask me anything video. So I'm going to be telling you some things that I've been working on and that I have planned for the future. Um, but then I'm going to, you know, in between all of that, I'm going to open the floor up to you. And if you have questions for me, please feel free to put them in the live chat. If, um, if I don't get around to your questions, uh, I will try to you know, come back later. And if you put them in the comments of the re-uploaded video, I'll just type, this is me typing. I'll just type a response to you. So, you know, if you feel like interacting, do that. If you feel moved to ask a question, do that. All I ask is that you be polite and uh, both to myself and to the rest of the viewing audience. Um, <laughs> somebody, somebody, uh, in the chat named Paladin9 says, dang, I can't believe I was pronouncing it wrong. Of course it isn't P Hill. Well, you know, it, it may be P Hill in certain parts of the world. I didn't want to, you know, exclude anybody from their pronunciation. So uh, you may call me P Hill if it, if it makes you happy. Anyway, so I have a few things on the list that I want to talk about tonight. Uh, thing number one, because this is probably the thing that the majority of people who are watching this are wondering to themselves, because I'm guessing a lot of you are here because of the of the Batman the Animated Series documentary. Um, that has gotten a lot more attention in the last month, uh, which is it's very exciting. Uh, if you if you didn't know, the documentary itself is is like now over 8,000 views, which is great. And the uh, small clip of the of, of the Joker part of that film, um, that has recently crossed over 300,000 views, which is just insane. I've never had anything perform like that ever my, my entire life. I'm, I'm blown away. And so at the top of this broadcast, I want to say thank you to the audience Whoever you may be, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, absolutely. I, I don't want to make all, all of tonight be about numbers, but I do want to point out that as of the beginning of this recording tonight, uh, my channel is only 91 people away, 91 people from hitting a thousand subscribers, which is absolutely massive. And uh, I'm, I'm so excited because it, it absolutely... Um, comes into play with what I want to do with this channel and where I want to take things. So thank you, thank you, thank you. First and foremost, thank you. But going going back to what I was saying about Batman, uh, people have asked me what is the next thing that I have planned? What's the next, you know, is there another documentary happening? And I don't have a concrete answer for you, but I, I will let you know that it is something I have been in talks with different people about. Um, and right now I've got a few different, uh, oh, thank you, Paladin9. Paladin9 says, glad to be here. Glad to have you here. Um, 
so right now I've got a few different ideas I'm kicking around. And if, if any of these ideas sound like something that you would like to see, absolutely let me know. And if there's another idea that you, you know, really would like to see, I, I'd like to know that as well, because ultimately um, I do want to make something that people are already big fans of. I think it's kind of nice if we kind of all can collectively be fans of something, right? Um, but here's the top like four or five ideas that I've got in my head. I would love to do a documentary about the 2003 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's my favorite series or yeah, version, I should say favorite version of that series of characters. So doing, doing a film about that would be just amazing. Um, I would love to do something about the Animaniacs. It's a cartoon that I was just crazy about when it first came out. Um, I know there's a huge fan, you know, support for it. And it also recently had a resurgence. They, they made, they've been making new episodes for Hulu. Um, so that puts it in a really unique position because not a lot of cartoons can say that. So uh, that, that's a really interesting thing. Uh, another one I would love to do is uh, the Thundercats. Would love to do something about the Thundercats. A fourth one I would love to do is the uh, the real Ghostbusters, which was the animated series that came out of the '80s. Uh, I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan, and this would just be uh, such a wonderful way to to dig in and just enjoy the fandom even more. I would love to do that. Um, and number five, which uh, Victoria in the comments just just called out because uh, she already knows because I've told her, <laughs> um, is Felix the Cat. I, I've been wanting to do a Felix the Cat documentary for for years before, even I think before Stay Tuned. So those are my top five. Um, now, does it mean I couldn't do something different? No, of course not. If, if so, you know. If the right opportunity presented itself and, you know, all the stars aligned and then somehow I was in the position of making like a Simpsons documentary or something like that. Sure, I would absolutely go and do that. Uh, but those are like my my top five, like, you know, wish list and um, something I'd like to try to do next time around if I can is maybe partner with the studio that holds the copyright. Uh, that would be really cool. I, I would love to do that. And that's something I'm gonna try to do um, just because I think it would make the process be a little bit less uh, stressful for me. And maybe I could get some really cool access to things that are not in the general public, um, which I was able to get for, for Batman, but. But I mean, who knows? Maybe they have like a huge archive section that I could get access to. That would be really great. I would love that. Um, Paladin Nine says, "Not gonna lie, all these sound great, uh, like great documentary series. Maybe add gargoyles to that list. Absolutely, gargoyles would be. I mean, anything from the Disney Afternoon would be really great. I personally, um, I would be more excited to do something about either Ducktales or." Um, Tailspin, if I had to really pick, it'd be probably Tailspin because I love that show. But but I would not be opposed to a Gargoyles documentary in the least. Um, so that's that's like on the horizon. That is something that I'm, you know, aiming to do. I think that would be a lot of fun. Does that mean there's going to be another Kickstarter? Probably. Um, not that I love doing Kickstarters, but I've done two of them now. And they were both successful, which is encouraging. But man, it is a, it's a full-time job to run a Kickstarter. And it is nail-biting. I mean, if you, don't, if you don't reach your target right away, and trust me, the Batman one was like down to the wire. I, I was freaking out about that. If I, you know, if I could find a way to secure and like know that I had enough support to get to my goal relatively quickly and then i could just spend the rest of the time thinking up stretch goals i would absolutely do another kickstarter but it, it is such a scary thing to embark on 
um, especially because I know that if I do another one, I would want to probably ask for double what I did for Batman. And here's the reason why I would want to ask for double, because you may be wondering, well, Phil, are you just pocketing a bunch of money? And the answer to that is no. <laughs> the money that came in from Batman absolutely went into, you know, me dedicating all of my time and energy to that documentary. That's where it went. Um, but because of COVID and other situations, you know, I, I still had to make that film by interviewing people through, um, hey, someone gave me a thumbs up. Thanks for the thumbs up. Um, I had to, I had to go ahead and make that film through virtual interviews and something I would like to do next time around would be to actually pay to fly to where people are and find like a nice setting or, or, or if they let me shoot, you know, a video in their home, fine. Uh, but I would like to go to go to the people and interview them in person and maybe get some footage of like, you know, walking around with them at like a comic book store or, or something. I want to do something that is a, a bit grander, um, but I'm not complaining. I love how the Batman film turned out. Uh, there's a real intimacy there that that works very well. Uh, I, I just want to try to see what else I can do. That's all. Um, so that's the documentary stuff. That's where I am on the documentary. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've also mentioned <clears throat> try, trying to, one second. <clears throat> ah, thank you. <clears throat> I mentioned um, trying to grow the channel. And so getting to a thousand subscribers is like, that's the next step. That is the next step in transforming what I'm doing with YouTube. So uh, if you haven't already, I'm going to ask that kindly that you subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Just search for my name. Uh, you'll, you'll find me there. And um, I'm currently in the 900s zone, which is very exciting. Uh, so, and, you know, I'm, I'm eager to see what happens after 1,000. But for right now, right now, the target is 1,000. Um, thing number two or three on my list. I can't remember which how long this list is. But I'm... I'm animating right now. I'm animating a, car a cartoon, a 90-second cartoon for an organization here in Texas called TXMPA. It's very, very exciting. They're an awesome organization. If you want to learn more about them, you can go to TXMPA.org, org, uh, and you can learn more about them. And they are a media company that, that what, basically what they do is they are – bringing media into Texas, whether it's through the movie industry, through video games, through television, basically anything media related, they are working to bring that here because I'm coming to you right now from Austin, Texas. So it's a really great organization. And, uh, but a lot of people don't know how they do what they do and they find themselves having to answer those questions every year, which makes it very difficult for them to get the support they need. So they hired me to animate a cartoon that explains what they do. And I've been drawing, yes, I've been drawing on paper. Um, let me just try to get some drawings here. For, actually, you know what, let me just grab, let me just grab my, uh, my storyboards here. So like these are some storyboards for the uh, for the cartoon, I'll just kind of do like some flipping through. These are all these are all storyboards for the cartoon. So it's again, it's a 90 second cartoon, and the idea behind it uh, is this little character, and her name is Lena Lone Star. That's her right there, Lena Lone Star, and Lena is a uh, a spunky little star. With a can-do attitude and a big hair dooley wop that she can flip around, she's a she's a fun little character, um, and I, I was able to uh, design the characters. For, there's only two characters. Well, no, there actually are more than two characters, but there's two main characters in the cartoon, and then some like incidental characters in the background. So I, I was able to do character design and storyboards, and now I'm 
hand drawing the frames. Uh, I've done about 200 drawings so far, and I'm maybe a third of the way through. So it's going to be up there when I'm done with this thing. Uh, thank you for whoever just gave me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Thank you, Paladin9. I appreciate that. Paladin9 said that looks great. Much obliged. Here, I, I realize I haven't been putting you up on screen. So there's Paladin9. Oh, that's cool how they did that. Look at that. It's like right there. Hmm. Um, so, so that's a current project. The goal is to get it done by January. I'm not expecting it to be done by January, but I'm, I'm still keeping that as my goal because if I shoot for January, maybe I'll hit February. You know what I mean? But if I tell myself, eh, it doesn't matter when, well, then who knows when it will get done. And I don't want to do that. That's definitely not like on my list of things to do. Um, so, yeah, but here's like, here's an example of like, here's, oh, I can't even see it. Oh, there you go. There's an example of a drawing that I just did earlier today. So, uh, I draw on a uh, 50 pound paper. Um, it's nice because you can see through it, but it's not onion skin. I do have onion skin paper. The problem with drawing on onion skin is the drawing part. Um, it's very waxy paper. So, I find that it's not conducive to uh to making good drawings and it's hard it's hard to erase things and and to even see what you're doing so onion skin's great for looking through it's just not great for the drawing part um the 50 pound paper is really kind of like the best of both worlds you can see through it especially if you have what i do which is a lamp underneath my desk uh shooting light up at the uh see-through surface of my desk i have a glass desk and so um, that allows me to see through the paper if I need to. And then uh, if I turn that lamp off, then I can, you know, see normally with all that again. But that's been the process is drawing on uh, six by nine paper. And I, I scan it in with my scanner you see back here. I'm still using a scanner. Nothing crazy elaborate. Um, and that's it. Frame by frame, just making a cartoon which is pretty great. Maybe I'll do some example videos at some point on YouTube. I may do that. I don't know if I have permission to do that yet, but maybe at some point. And then once the video is done, once the cartoon is done, absolutely, I'll be sharing that on YouTube. So uh, and maybe after it's done, they'll they'll give me, you know, the high sign that I can go ahead and do some behind the scenes. Uh, you know, here's how I made the cartoon kind of, kind of thing. Um, what I had a list of things I wanted to talk to you about, and now I am drawing a blank. So I'm going to really quick go back and look at my list because I thought I could memorize everything and I was incorrect. Um, oh, no, I think that was everything I wanted to talk about. And then I just, I, I'm leaving space to answer questions. So uh, just as a reminder, if, if you have any questions for me in regards to really anything, uh, preferably animation related, please go ahead and ask me that now. Thank you for whoever just gave me a thumbs up. I very much appreciate it because I'm kind of talking in a vacuum here. And unless people are inter engaging in some way, I have no way of knowing if anyone's really actually watching. Um, oh, you know, this is a good time for me to, to tell you about the Retail Sunshine, these guys right here. Uh, animated cartoon that I started developing earlier this year. Um, it is currently taking a break because I'm already animating something. So obviously I'm not doing two project, projects at the same time. But I will tell you that by the time I'm finished with Miss Lena Lone Star, um, I feel like way more ready. I think I'm gonna even, even by the end of it, I'm gonna feel way more ready to then uh, jump in and do my own cartoon even better than I did when I made the opening credits. So um, I'm really looking forward to improving my own skill set because let me tell you, if you don't do this stuff all the time, it, it's like a muscle, you know? It, it can atrophy over time if you don't uh, keep working it. Hey, thanks for the heart. Whoever just gave me a heart, I appreciate that. Uh, Victoria says... Do you have any personal animation projects you're working on? Oh, literally what I was just talking about. <laughs> oh, that was very well-timed. Hmm. 
Thank you. Yes, I do have any. I do have personal animation projects I'm working on. Uh, so these guys behind me are from a, a series called Retail Sunshine. It's a comic strip that I started years and years ago. And um, back in 2020, I put out a very, very short cartoon. It was like the the opening credits theme song because I want to I want to make them into an animated series. Now, I'm not telling you that I'm going to sit here and animate episode after episode after episode. Maybe that'll happen. I don't know. But <clears throat> as of right now, I just have plans for one episode. It's already been written. I've already cast the voices. Um, so I have their voices on, you know, on file so I can start, you know, animating to those, which is really great. Uh, but once I'm done with, with this TXMPA project, then yeah, I'd like to go back and start animating them. That would be really awesome. Paladin nine says, can we see the drawing set up on your desk? And do you ever use a tablet computer to draw or animate? Well, I don't really have a way to show you my desk right now, but I will tell you it's incredibly messy and I can at least pick things up and like show you what I have next to me. So quite literally, oh, this is going to be difficult. Oh my gosh. Give me just a moment here. Well, first of all, let's start with, let's start with tools, right? So this is uh, one of my drawing pencils. Um, this is a, a non-photo blue, which means the idea is if you were to draw on a black and white piece of paper and then made a photocopy, you wouldn't see the, the, this pencil. Or you would see it, but it would be maybe like a slight light gray. It, or, you know, if you draw, draw light enough, it won't show up at all. I draw in blue, I just find it's easier so that when I go back and ink everything in with pen, then I can actually really see the difference between like if I did graphite versus if I did like blue, right? And then I just use like a little eraser like this. Man, this is really, there you go. I just use like a tiny little eraser like this. Um, this particular eraser, which I love, by the way, I don't remember what it's called, but I think you can find them at, at Michael's and it's like a triangle. It's in the shape of like a rounded corner triangle, um, if, if you can find it. Seriously, it's like the best eraser I've ever, ever used. In college, everybody tried giving us those kneaded erasers that were like a ball of rubbery mess. And yeah, those were okay. But man, this thing is like way, way, way nicer. Um, so that's what I'm drawing with is this like non-photo blue pencil, which I have. Here we go. Here's like a nicer one. Um, this is actually a Prismacolor. No, they are not paying me to talk about them. This is a Prismacolor Cull Erase, and the model number is 20028. So if you're if you're looking for uh, replicating my setup, this is what I'm drawing with. Um, when I do inking, I just use Sakura uh, Pig Pigma Micron pens. I just use these things. And if you use these pens, then you already know. By the way, thank you for all the likes coming in. I really appreciate that. Um, you already know these things dry up like the Dickens. And there are videos online where you can you can buy some ink like this um, and you can refill them. I haven't tried that yet, but I know you can do it and I have the tools to do it. So I might try that because buying those things are like $3 a pop. And it really, really, really adds up. Um, but what I was trying to show you on my desk, and this is all completed. These are these are like this is a stack of drawings that I have that are all completed from this project. This is like my stack of. You would think I would have a better setup than this, but I I truly do not. <laughs> I really don't. Um, my place just kind of becomes like an area that gets piled on for a while. And then if I, if I look over here to my left, um, I have like another two stacks of drawings. You can kind of see a little drawing right there, right? So again, this is like, these are big stacks of drawings. And all of this, all of these drawings uh, make up so far 
about the first 30 seconds of of the cartoon and then i use this um really really low profile pencil sharpener i don't have like fancy tools and i i've never really found that i needed them this is very very low profile I'm trying to get this like on camera here um but i have had this pencil sharpener since i was in college it even says university bookstore you can't see that right there you can kind of see it it even says university bookstore oh here we go here we go university bookstore B bgsu do you see that it's because i bought this thing when i was in college like 20 freaking years ago um the ruler that i use because occasionally i have to like make straight lines uh is this thing i've had this for a very long time i love that it's see-through i just i really do love this ruler it's got a really good feel to it um the measurements are really great because you can see it on both sides um so the, the, these are all the tools I use. I don't I don't do anything super fancy, honestly. Maybe one day I'll like create a better, more elaborate setup. My desk I got from uh, IKEA, and it looks like a, a kidney bean, like a big kidney bean. It's glass and it's frosted glass. But what's perfect about that is I first of all I love the surface of it. It's really smooth. But what's really great about it is I have a lamp underneath my desk that's sitting on like a box and I just turn the lamp on and then the desk just illuminates wherever I want to look at on the desk. So instead of having like a special desk, because there are light tables you can buy, which I may do at some point. But what's great about this is I can just be sitting at my desk and instantly turn my my normal desk into a light table. And so I'll just sit here and just draw right where I'm sitting right now, or like I'm sitting right in front of you. Um, and then I just scan the drawings in and and uh, and test it out and see if it's, if it's working. Um, so that's kind of my setup. I hope that that answers your question, Paladin9. Uh, Tabitha says, the infamous blue pencils. Yes, so Tabitha already knows from uh, me answering these questions in videos past that the that the blue pencils are a thing that I've been drawing with for I, I'm assuming that's why she's saying that. Uh, Nicole is here. Hi Nicole. Nicole goes all the way back to when um, Stay Tuned was a pirate radio broadcast show where I would review uh, animated series and movies. And before I was doing any interviews, I was reviewing things because there aren't enough people in the world reviewing things and providing their opinions. So anyway, but I met Nicole all the way back then and she has been a, a real sweetheart and has stayed with me ever since 2018. So, hey Nicole. And Paladin 9 says, "Yep." Well, I don't know what that was a yep to, but I'm going to I'm going to take it as a positive. I'm going to take it as a net positive. Um I'm going to really quick check in on my channel and see if uh I haven't had any any super big changes in subscribers but but i remain optimistic i remain optimistic that this will be uh maybe the week where 1000 subscribers happens if you haven't already gone and subscribed to my youtube channel please do that i am trying to get to a thousand subscribers so i can grow my channel i can grow stay tuned uh it would be it would mean a lot to me and if you've already done it you know, maybe go and tell a friend they should do it because I only need like, it's like less than a hundred now. It's not very much. <laughs> uh, hey, Samantha K is here. Hi, Samantha K. What was your favorite part of making Batman the Animated Series documentary? <sighs> My favorite part. Um, honestly, not like I was lying before. I just say honestly as a preface for some reason. I really, really love editing, and I I love um, I loved finding through lines through people's stories. Like I I had a plan. I had this big list of things I was going to ask, like every single person. And after the first two or three interviews, it became less and less about my plan and more and more about like learning 
the story and uncovering the story that each person wanted to tell me. And I, I would still ask them questions, but it, it became this like interesting give and take of, I have questions in my head, but I know you've got your own story to tell and I'm going to go ahead and figure out and let people have enough room to tell the story that they were most passionate about. Cause I, th I think the best stuff comes out of that. When a person is, um, sharing their passion like that on camera, that's when you get a lot of magical things. So I would say uncovering the stories that I didn't know I would hear and then editing those with everybody else's story uh, to make one big story. That was, which I know is, um, I don't know if that's one answer or multiple answers, but I, I loved that. That process of uncovering things and, and, and discovering things I never knew and then finding a way to tell a story with that was just really uh, just very special. It's a very memorable time in my life. And um, the great thing about making a film is that when you're done, even if you forget some of the details of the journey there, you end up at the destination with this thing that you can watch and that other people can watch. And so then, then even if you forget things a little bit, you still have that, that always ties your memories to it. It's like an anchor. The film becomes like an anchor. That's what I was, I planned that statement from the beginning. I did not. Oh, Diana is here. My good friend, Diana, who I've known for many years. She said, yeah, the show and the channel has grown a lot since it first started. You ain't just whistling Dixie, Diane, Diana. I don't know why I said Diane, Diana. I call people nicknames sometimes. It happens. And sometimes when I'm not even trying, it happens. Much to their dismay. Um, yeah, I started my channel back in 2013. Uh, but the majority of the growth has happened in the last month. And absolutely in the last year or so. So, um, you know uh it's been quite a ride i i i didn't know i was going to be going in this direction this was never something i i didn't make my channel in 2013 and think let's go for a thousand subscribers but it's exciting to be here and uh yeah emily anderson says insert gif here about you being handsome <laughs> That's my response to that. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks, you guys. That was that was great. Those are some excellent questions. I hope I gave you the answers that answered your questions. Um, if you're watching this after the fact on the Rewind, because I will be re-uploading this to YouTube uh, very, very soon, uh, feel free to ask me anything in the comments, and I will reply to you in the comments. And uh, again, thanks to everyone over the years for all of your support in all the forms it takes. Um, you may also feel inspired to go and support me on Patreon. Uh, the great thing about Patreon is if you aren't up for throwing money at me at this point in your life, you can follow me there for free. Okay. So uh, I think I have a thing I can put on, on the screen, right? I do right there. Yeah. So that's the website you can go to and you can follow for free. See if you like the updates. If you decide you want to throw a dollar at me or whatever you can. And Patreon has come a long way since its inception. You can now uh, support a person instead of monthly, you can do it annually, which is great. You just do like a one-time thing and then you don't think about it the rest of the year. Um, but then the person you're supporting, you know, gets to appreciate and benefit from that. Uh, the whole year through. So uh, it is very much appreciated because, you know, I like to keep the lights on. That's how I can do these kinds of live streams. Because without light, it would look like this. That's not very good. <laughs> That's too much. Do we have any more comments and questions before I close things up for the night? Paladin 9 says, thanks for having us, P. Hill. Hey. Thank you, Paladin9. 
I'm glad you were here. And uh, uh, Emily says, my phone cut. I missed the response to our inside joke. Well, you'll have to watch it again later. Um, it was it was a lot of me just sitting here and staring blankly at the camera. That's really all it was. But no, I do know I do know about your your. In, we have an inside joke that if I post a photo uh, of myself, that uh, she then throws up a gif of somebody reacting in a way that implies that they're very happy with what they saw. So uh, I, I appreciate you adding that even in a non-GIF related setting. Thanks so much. Oh, hey, Diana, she's back. She says, would you ever consider a time-lapse video of your animation process? I was literally just talking with a good friend of mine about this right before doing this live stream. I, I, am, I am considering it, I am. Um, I know people really like that stuff and it is fun to watch. I, I think for me, it's a lot of pressure. I know that might sound silly, but like I get very, very nervous about it not turning out well. Um, so I am, I am considering it. The fact that I know that there are people that want it does make me feel a little bit better about it. Uh, I know with time lapse, I, I'm pretty sure anyway. I haven't done a time lapse video. But I know that I could step away from them for a little bit and leave my my phone there and then come back to it and like, you know, regroup a little bit mentally. So maybe if I did that and I wasn't sitting there trying to pressure myself to do it like on the spot. Yeah, I, I'm considering it. I'm definitely considering it. Maybe I'll do it of like one of my retail Sunshine characters. Maybe not the character for um, the TXMPA thing, but... Maybe I will do one for TXMPA. Maybe I will. Maybe that'll be a really great way to promote them. The, the point is, yes, I'm thinking about it. But like so many things in life, I constantly go back and forth. So just know it is something I've already been considering. And then I will talk myself out. And then I will go, no, 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 I should do this. And then I go, no, 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 I really shouldn't. So <laughs> one of these days... The I should do this will win out. And on that day, you will see a time lapse video. So thank you for asking that question. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, everybody, you were really great. Thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for, uh, oh, Diana says, I think anything you decide to do will turn out great. Well, that means very, very much to me. Um, when anybody says anything remotely like that, it means a lot because. If I can get real with you, with everybody for just a second, like sometimes as a person who has a lot of different um, creative outlets, sometimes it, it gets a little bit intimidating uh, in here because I feel like, well, maybe if I focused more and I just did one thing and I put all of my energy into one thing, then maybe then I would be like, stellar at that one thing but like the reality is i i mean obviously most of my my love and passion comes around cartooning and animation so it's all sort of in the same zone but the reality is i love all the different aspects of of all of the process like i love the voice recording i love the script writing i love storyboarding I love the actual getting in the grind and animating. Um, I love like the editing part. I like all of it. I love all of it. I genuinely love all of it. And that's, that's as honest as I can be. So um, thank you for whoever put a, a care reaction on that. It, it just, it gets over overwhelming sometimes. It gets overwhelming. So uh, Emily Anderson says, you're not alone in those thoughts wonderments and feelings thanks that means a lot to me emily uh you know because i i sometimes I'll, I'll have this like uh uh imposter syndrome if you want to call it that or whatever and i'm like man why have i not gone from here to here in a shorter period of time why is it taking me so long i definitely have that stuff um and i chose an industry that is 
not known for being quick with his animation. So it, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint, you know? And um, there's a lot of beauty in that. There's a lot of patience and endurance that comes from that. I feel like I've learned a lot uh, just in life by by doing the work that I'm doing. And um, that's about all I really can say about that. I, I look forward to what else is coming next. And I hope you'll be there with me. And I, I really appreciate you guys, uh, those of you who have been here for a number of years. Really, it, it means a lot that you're still here. Um, because, you know, one of the one of the concerns when shifting gears is that people are going to lose interest and go away. So, you know, uh, it's nice when that doesn't happen. Of course, when I said that, the little number in the corner that tells me how many people are watching right now went down. So that's not helping. Just kidding. It's fine. <laughs> Most of what I say and do is for comedy. So don't go feeling any kind of way about that. All right. Well, I think I'm going to call it a wrap right there. Paladin nine says, chop up those negative thoughts with your mental karate and do what you love. Thank you. I, I think I do that. I think I, I think I do that because here's the thing. The negative thoughts are there. I'm not going to lie. They are very persistent, but you know, what's more persistent me and my willpower and and that is what ultimately always ends up winning. But I'm not going to tell you that any of this is easy because it certainly is not easy. And if you're ever feeling like you're getting beaten down, you know, just remember, like, people out there, even though it may look like they're uh, making it look easy, uh, they are very likely dealing with it as well. So just for those of you who may need to hear that, just remember... Um, we're all dealing with something at some point and everyone's on their own journey and you just got to respect that and kind of keep an open mind that we're all finding our own paths as we go. So there you go. There's my bit of Hallmark inspirational goodness for you for the evening. Uh, there's the place where you can come support me. Please again, uh, Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and maybe tell a friend. I would appreciate it because, you know, uh, less than 100 people till 1,000, folks. That's not very many. It's almost there. It's going to happen. Maybe even in the next 48 hours, which would be a Thanksgiving Day miracle. Who knows? Enjoy all that turkey you eat this week if you do eat that. And enjoy time with family and friends. Make sure you say, stay safe on Black Friday. I know I'm going to be because it's a annual tradition with me and a buddy of mine here in Austin that we go and do the Black Friday thing. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, where I once was a retail guy who had to deal with Black Friday, I now am a consumer who gets to just go and enjoy it. So, uh, And I'll also be here and I'll be animating probably the rest of the week, which is a good thing. I'm not complaining. Uh, thanks guys for watching. I will see you next time. If you want me to do another one of these broadcasts sometime soon, let me know. Maybe I'll do another one. And uh, I'll see you in the future. Thanks for watching tonight. <laughs>